<laughs> All right, so our next speaker is um, Martin Pargo, and he will be giving a talk on technologies, innovation, and opportunities in Africa. So let's make some noise for Martin, please. Thank you so much, giving me the opportunity to talk to you. Now, I put up a picture here. I, it's always difficult to talk about it. The, uh, this picture went around 20 years ago around the world and made a huge impact in Germany, where I'm from. Now, I visited, I, or you might want to think about, or you might want to wonder, you know, what has that to do with technology innovation? But I, I visited uh, East Germany right after the wall went down, and it was sad to see that the East had really stopped innovating, stopped with their infrastructure development, so the infrastructure was still at the stage it was before the Second World War. Now, the good part of that was three years later, East Germany had the most, one of the most sophisticated uh, phone and internet infrastructures in place. From going from no, almost no roads to no phone lines, and of course no internet, to one of the most sophisticated networks. In fact, it's probably, after 20 years, it's probably still more advanced than most locations in, in, in the United States. Now, when I started, I, when I met Femi a few years ago, I quickly realized that Africa is actually in a very similar position. Africa does not have much infrastructure to worry about. Now, first world countries, they spend a lot of time and it get, constantly gets slowed down by the fact that they have to worry about all the infrastructure they have already deployed, how the new technology fits in with that. Africa has the opportunity to has a blank slate, essentially. It can deploy new technology far faster and, and even come up with disruptive solutions to the problems Africa faces. So I mentioned uh, phone lines in East Germany. Now, I, when you looked at, at the developed world, even in the United States, it is still, when you go to, come to the cities, you see the rows of poles running wires and wires and wires to every single house. One for the power line, one for the cable TV, and another one for, for the phone. Now, I drove around Lagos. I didn't see, I, I didn't see much wires. I saw some power lines, yes. But you just go mobile. When I same with the PC. When I joined Microsoft in 87, Bill Gates had just announced his mantra of having a PC on every desk. Now, I'm just thinking, that Nigerian farmer currently does not have a desk and will not have a desk because it doesn't need, he doesn't need to. But he has a mobile phone in his pocket far more sophisticated and powerful than the PC at the time. Same thing with banks. Do we really need a bank branch on every corner? Do we really need, or would it be much better to have your own bank branch in the pocket, just like Akin I showed this morning? Do we really need to have, everybody has to have a bank account? Or can we just use mobile money on our mobile phones? Same with retail. I mean, Walmart is the American standard of mega box retailing and efficient supply chain. Now, does 
Nigeria need a mega store in every village to cater to the growing middle class? Or maybe Africa should use the Amazon model and deploy uh, an internet superstore. Now, when you look at that, then uh, you quickly realize that a mega box store will not fly in Africa because it would require that every consumer first has a car to get there. It's not going to happen. Nigeria will also not be able to put up internet superstores because those type of superstores require very sophisticated shipping infrastructure, which is very difficult to, to build up from, from nothing. However, Nigeria does have a ton of entrepreneurial retail stores all over the country already. How about if you could use the internet and have those retailers connect with the suppliers more efficiently, just like the mega stores. And then have mobile, uh, have consumers use their mobile phone in their pocket to find those retailers online, to order from them and pay with mobile money, and then have it delivered, or have it picked up, or they pick it up, or have it delivered by a local a courier this very same day. Wouldn't that be interesting? Now, this is a picture from uh, Seattle, where I now live. Now, you see that leap might have uh, encouraged some people in Seattle and to start companies like Amazon and Microsoft, who started in Seattle and now are global brands. I believe that Africa actually has the opportunity to leapfrog countries who have to deal with their legacy. Leapfrog and innovate and introduce new technology and come up with unique solutions, far more uh, disruptive to everything ever built. Thank you very much.